And I, I kind of see this twofold, right? So when you get really extreme bullishness, that can be a good thing because that means investors are finally getting around to the idea that the economy is opening. There is some optimism going forward. And one thing that we've had all year is a ton of cash on the sidelines. And investors being bullish means I'll finally be able to put some of that money back in, which is going to be a further uptick for the stock markets. On the flip side, generally speaking, when you have people getting extremely bullish, that can mean you see some sort of a drawback. Um, I would actually argue my first point that it will lead people to put cash in the markets. I see as much more of a positive and much more of an op optimistic sign here. And Courtney, just in terms of perhaps style and strategy going forward, uh, you know, we've heard a number of strategists also talking about perhaps taking a barbell approach as we are still in this sort of start and stop recovery. We have the vaccine distribution underway, but of course it is in the slow goings right now. Uh, where do you see this rotation starting to pick up steam here as we think about these reopening and epicenter stocks? Yeah, I think the big thing when we look at reopenings is we're going to see this big shift where it's not just those big names like Apple and Google and Microsoft and Amazon that are leading this rally. We actually started to see this since the fall, really since our vaccine news came out. It's all of the rest of the economy that's starting to reopen. So things like your small companies and your cyclicals have actually outperformed really since the fall. And I think you're probably going to continue to see that happen. And a really good reminder here is a lot of people I see own the S&P 500. They say, oh, that's a great way of being diversified. I own that fund. I should be good to go. But what most people don't realize is about 20% of the S&P 500 is just those five big tech names that have been leading the rally. So you're often very poorly diversified just by owning the S&P 500. So it's just a really good reminder to take a look at your accounts. Make sure you are well spread out because those things that have been doing really well, we might see the shift happen. You want to make sure you don't miss out on the rally of things like your small companies, your foreign companies, or some other things that really might come around this year. You want to make sure you own those. Yeah, the tech companies too, uh, it's interesting. Over the last six months, you got the S&P 500 up 20%. We were talking earlier about Amazon and Facebook mostly trading sideways over that same period. Um, and a few investors have been stressing kind of the opportunity of relative risk reward in the energy space, one of the standouts yet again today. Uh, is that another space that you might be playing here? Uh, we talked just a little bit earlier about the energy space, maybe going through the changes that the Biden administration is going to be coming in on a solar and wind front could harm some of the oil players. What's mm -hmm. your take? Yeah, energy actually very well could be an interesting play because that was another got that got hit very hard last year. And I would argue almost lit harder than I think the fundamentals really justified it to be hit. So that's another one that has really been coming around. And what I like about the energy sector a lot is the dividends that they pay, where you get a really attractive dividend, much better than you're getting on treasuries, much better than you're checking your savings, and even much better than the S&P 500. So it's a really good sector that I would argue does have a lot of growth potential to go and pays a nice dividend in the meantime. When you bring up Biden's administration, that is arguably one of the biggest risks to energy right now is they want to put a lot of money in clean energy, which could affect some of your more traditional energy sources. But I think the idea is we're likely going to see them really focusing on COVID as soon as that new administration starts and not be so focused on energy. So we're just going to watch that. But I don't think it's necessarily a near term risk at this point in time. And then, of course, lost a bit in the political shuffle that we've seen in Washington. We are getting the start of earnings season at the end of this week. And big banks are, of course, leading the way there. We have seen those financial stocks also rally in the past couple of weeks, past couple of months. What's your expectation there when it comes to their profitability, especially in this firming rate environment? Well, we're already starting to see treasuries tick up here, which I don't think anybody was expecting. But the idea is we could very likely continue to see that happen this year. And that's a great thing for banks, because if they can loan out money and their profits are going to be a lot stronger if interest rates go up, that's a really positive thing for your banks. And I think what had been positive last year was seeing how well they held up when everything went crazy back in March and April. Your banks were actually much well better capitalized than people had expected, and they held up a lot better. So they're coming in out of this recession in a much better position. And if we see interest rates continue to tick up, it's only going to be a positive for the banks. Yeah, over the last three months, only one sector behind the energy sector that would be financials uh, continuing to show their strength today. Uh, Courtney Dominguez, Pin Capital Management Senior Wealth Advisor, thanks again for, for bringing us on.